Saints, it is time for Gideon to actually sit down. It is time. I reviewed him before. He's a new a new believer. Maybe he's a believer. I really don't know. But the way he's explaining it today, which I'm going to show you, is not the true gospel. So if he believes what he's teaching, then he's not saved. However, I do want to give him grace because some people, when they just become saved, I don't know why I said people with such a high-pitched voice, but some people... <laughs> Oh man. But some people when they just get saved, like they they genuinely get saved, but they teach the gospel wrong because they get confused by other people coming in and teaching a false gospel, perhaps a young Don, perhaps a young Don. So maybe he say maybe he's not, I don't know, but he should absolutely stop teaching right now. Right now. And um yeah, we're going to review some of that video now. I'm going to show you exactly why I'm saying this because this is pretty awful stuff here. Uh, you are saved through, you are saved by grace through faith. So just context, I gotta give you the context real quick. This is another stream where Gideon's teaching. He's basically talking about how we need works to show that we're saved. Somebody came in and gave the verse Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Game over. Um, I didn't mean to press that sound effect, but it kind of worked because it's game over. That is game over for the works-based teachers. That verse, those verses is game over for the works-based teachers. Can I get a hallelujah? All right. So yeah, some somebody gave that verse. That's my favorite verse, really. One of my favorite verses to show that we're saved. It literally says we're saved by grace through faith. Not a, It literally says not of works. Not a word. It literally says that, and people still deny it. I don't see how, how do you deny that verse? It literally says we're saved by grace through faith, not of works. Like, how do you argue against that? These people are wild. It's wild. But anyway, somebody gave that verse, and we're going to just start playing it right here. You are saved through, you are saved by grace through faith. Uh, w verse. You're saved by faith. Ephesians 2. And I, 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 I mean, no, <laughs> you see, like every time somebody brings up these verses that showing that we're saved by faith alone, he gets tripped up over his words because he doesn't want to. For some reason, it might be the pride. It might be what young Don is teaching him. It, it doesn't agree with what he currently believes about the gospel. He's like, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, but, but. Respect <laughs> by this, but keep in mind, most of the verses that everybody is pulling up is from Paul. And that's the verses that everybody's going to pull up, pretty much. Uh, For by grace are ye saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. I agree. Not of... Okay. Oh, I mean, if you agree, then don't add anything else to it. Works, lest any man should boast. For we are his worksmanships created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. But my question to you is, we are under the law of Christ, Rick. What is the law of Christ? Uh, either you can comment, I'll look for it, but I'm asking you right now, what is the law of Christ? I'm not sure why he's asking that saying. like, why did he bring that up? But he's not even going to give you the verse for the law of Christ. But somebody put this in the live chat, and I'm going to show you what is the law of Christ according to Galatians 6 2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. So, carrying each other's bur burdens is the law of Christ. And I would say, you know, you could potentially add in these two commandments. Maybe Gideon's meaning the, meaning the two commandments as well. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Praise God for that. But I don't know why people bring this up in terms of salvation as we're saved by grace through faith, faith alone. At least most Christians do love their neighbor as themselves. Um, sometimes we, we don't act perfectly in that, though. We may do something that is not showing is not like an action like we may we may sin and that sin is not really an action that shows that we love the lord but i mean we still love the lord or we may sin against our neighbor does that mean we don't love our neighbor as ourselves you know those commandments i think are more so for fellowship with god if you want to have great fellowship with god um then you will obey those commandments uh to a high degree now 
If you mess up, though, it's not going to make you lose your salvation or send you to hell. Definitely not. Because I can show you in the New Testament also what the law of Christ is. And I can also show you in the Old Testament where it was uh, prophesied about the law of Christ coming. So if you can show me what the law of Christ is, I'll read it. I don't know why he's harping on this, saints. Like, the guy just gave him the verse about we're saved by grace through faith, and he's just, it's like he, he got triggered. He was like, uh, uh, but, but, you know, he got triggered by, by that. He got triggered, y'all. I, I, look, I don't know these workspace teachers, they get triggered when you bring up verses like Ephesians 2 8 through 9, um, some more than others. Gideon's new, so he doesn't really know how to rebut against it, and really nobody can. Nobody can properly give her a good rebuttal against that scripture, those scriptures. Nobody, absolutely nobody. But some people will come across more confident. Like, look, if somebody gives Young on that scripture, he'll sound confident. Well, you know, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, this is not what it's saying. And he'll go look some verse that contradicts it, which no verse contradicts the scripture. But he'll go look up something and sound confident. Well, as you see here, you see right here, just take a look. This is what it means. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 is not saying that you're saved by faith or whatever. And if, especially if you could show me in uh, Paul, the Ten Commandments. I agree, the Ten Commandments, but you guys got to realize the Ten Commandments is a table of context. The the table of the uh, the ten the Ten Commandments is a table of context with everything else in it. That's why Christ he said the two greatest commandments is to love the God love God with all your soul and all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself. These hang all the commandments. These hang all the law. Uh, you see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. James 2, 24. No, facts. Facts. And you're not justified by just your works. Yo, did you hear what he just said, saints? He said facts. Every verse in the Bible is true. Let me specify that. But he's taking it. I know he's under, he's misunderstanding it. He's thinking to be saved, you need works plus but that verse is not talking about justification in the sense of salvation. This justification in this verse, James 2.24, is not talking about being righteous in the sense that you're going to heaven because you're made righteous. It's talking about you basically look righteous because you're doing certain works. It's not talking about salvation. It's a different type. It's a different type of meaning when you translate it from the Greek here. And if this was the same justification that is meant in... Romans 5.1, the Bible would contradict itself, but it never contradicts itself. So it is talking about a different type of justification. All right, this is the NLT, but let me actually show you NIV uses justified. And then I'll change it back to the NLT to better explain what it means. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What is James... 224 say you see that a man is justified by works and not faith do these contradict do these contradict saints it seems like it does but it doesn't because there's two type of justifications being talked about this one in james 224 is not talking about salvation now romans 5 1 is because again the bible doesn't contradict itself James doesn't contradict romans 5 1 is two types of justification now let me show you through the NLT, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, let me show you through the NLT what type of justification this is. Therefore, since we have been made right, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. This is talking, saints, about our eternal destiny. Now, I'm going to give you another cross-reference. Romans 3, 23 to 24. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Saints, this is what justification really means in the sense of eternal security. And then I have another cross-reference, the faith of Abraham, Romans 4, 1 through 5. Gideon and all these works-based righteousness teachers really need to have a Bible study on Romans because it talks about what justification means, how do you become justified, how do you become seen righteous in God's sight for our salvation, for salvation purposes. Abraham, which is the father of the faith, Abraham was humanly speaking, the founder of the Jewish nation. What did he discover about being made right with God? 
If his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. For the scriptures tell us Abraham believed God, believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his what? Because of his what? Hey, everybody, Gideon, uh, Young Don, Isaiah Saldivar, JP, Chris Lasala, all these words based righteousness teachers. What does it say? Because of his faith. What? Because of his deeds? Because of his works? Um, because of his faith. When people work, their wages are not a gift. What does the word say? Salvation is a gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Not of works. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. Look, it's set in stone, y'all. They can't argue it. They can't argue it. You're not, it. It goes both ways. Hey, tripping up over his words. See, he's confused. I don't know, but he doesn't have the truth about this. You're neither justified. You need both. What? You need both? You can't have both. It's either by faith alone or it's by works. If you mix the two, then it's not by faith anymore. You're adding in works to it. You can't have both like that. In this instance... You can't have your cake and eat it too in this specific instance. Because we can't get in the kingdom without believing in Jesus Christ. Because there's Jews out there that keep the law, but they don't believe in Christ, but they won't enter into the kingdom. And then there's people that believe in Christ, but don't keep the law. See, he was right with the first part, but this is where he's wrong. They, it goes both ways. So he's like, uh, uh, he's tripping up over his words. There's something that he, I think he might know that it doesn't make sense. He's like, doesn't know what to say. Let's rewind that. And then there's people that believe in Christ, but don't keep the law. They, it goes both. <laughs> you see that? I'm not making fun of him. I'm just showing y'all that it doesn't make any sense. Therefore, it's hard to explain if you're not like super prideful and boastfully confident like a young Don is. Gideon is not at that level where young Don is. And it's not a good level. I'm not saying he should get there, but young Don is way too prideful and boastful. And he has a a sound of confidence. He sounds confident, but he's really not. Both ways. It goes both ways. Chris Lasala with the honey bomb. <laughs> God did. That dude's Keep a heretic. Separate from sin and the world, Jadeon. Don't listen to anyone who says otherwise. Bless you, bro. Bless you as well, Chris. Bless you as well, Chris. You be safe, my brother, man. Thank you so much, man. God did. Thank you, brother. Thank you, 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 thank you. Appreciate you, my man. Appreciate you. Uh, yes. I don't know, man. I think I think Chris is running a cult. I don't know what to say about Chris, y'all, but I think I know he's a false teacher, and I think that he's got some type of cult thing going on. He's actually been mentoring Young Don himself. Been mentoring Young Don, and now. He might be coming after Gideon, it looks like. <laughs> That's why I put that scary sound effect. <laughs> Chris Lasala, man. I'll do videos about him in the future, most likely. I haven't got to him yet. Uh, yes, the doctrine of salvation by faith alone was invented by a man named Martin Luther in the 1500s. Many people teach this false doctrine. Uh no. No, no, no. Faith alone was invented in the Bible, in the New Testament, folks. That's when it was invented. It's not invented in the 1500s. That's crazy. It's literally what the Bible teaches. Actually, I think it goes further. Well, actually, you might be right about that, but I think it might go further, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Bible study? Uh, maybe. I'll look into that. I I've heard about Martin Luther, and I'll look into that, man. I'm trying to get more into history. Because I feel like when you can better put history into the Bible, it just makes it so much clearer. Now, I'm about to show you another comment that is super hilarious. Watch how Gide Gideon, if I can talk, watch how Gideon responds to this comment right here. Not sure what everyone is saying, but we got to remember we are saved by faith alone. Work show other people that we're saved, not God. Love you, Gideon. I love you too, brother. I love you too, man. But, um... <laughs> I love you. He's like, I, I love you too. Every time somebody brings up faith alone, uh, it's like, I, you know, he doesn't really have a, a clear reaction to it. It's hilarious. But actually, the comment that he left, if I can show you the full, like, 
Yeah, if I can show you the full picture of it. Most of what he says is good here. But then he says, works show other people that were saved, which I would argue against that. They don't, you don't need proof of works for salvation. As anybody can do good works, Catholics can do good works, Muslims can do good works, Buddhists can do good works. So works don't necessarily show that we're saved as anybody can do good works. But I do like that he put this in, but we got to remember we are saved by faith alone. And this is what really triggered Gideon right here. Let's see how he responded again. I love you too, brother. I love you too, man. But um, I... just like, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know how to respond because I, I, I believe we're saved by works too. And this faith alone stuff is really getting to Gideon. He doesn't really know how to properly respond to it because he can't. The Bible doesn't preach that we need works to be saved. I love you, brother, but, you know, I, I, I just let, I let scripture talk. I let scripture talk. So, brother Brody. Scripture does talk. It says we're saved by faith alone, brother. He said, not sure why every, what everyone is saying, but we got to remember we're saved by faith alone. Works show other. And I do agree with him to an extent, you know, when you have faith, you believe in something. and But, you know, believing is also an action. Uh... I'll say it right here. Yeah, 1 John 2, 3. Okay, I'll start here. Uh, and he himself is the partition for our sins, and not for ours only, but for those of the whole world. But this, we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Now, that verse really got me for a while saying, so I'm like, what does this mean? Like, does it mean we need works because if we don't keep his commandments, I'm a liar, we don't know him? Is that, is that talking about salvation? Does that mean I'm not saved if I don't keep all of the commandments, Jesus' commandments? If I mess up maybe and not treating my neighbor as myself, does that mean I am a liar and I don't have the truth in me? I think those verses are talking about fellowship, our fellowship with God, our walk with God is not talking about salvation. Why is it not talking about salvation? Because let me show you, let me go back to the actual scriptures. It's saying to the one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments. See, if you go to Matthew 7, in Matthew 7, it says, Jesus will say to them, depart from me for I never knew you for I never knew you. So I think when we're saved, God knows us, but we start to learn him. We don't know him entirely. It's a walk. It's a fellowship. We learn him more by reading the word, by following the commandments, by being obedient. So I think in this instance, it's talking about fellowship. Actually, I know it for a fact, because again, we're saved by faith alone. If you mess up with keeping a commandment or doing a work that you're not supposed to do or not not doing good works, you may sin. It doesn't mean you're going to lose your salvation. I know that for a fact. So this right here has to be talking about fellowship. If you're not obedient, you're, you're not really knowing God to the full extent. God still knows you though. At the instant, I believe at the instant you are saved, God will never say to you what Matthew 7 says to the people who are rejected. Depart from me, for I never knew you. God's not going to say that to a born-again Christian. And he says that I never knew you because God was never living inside of that person who he rejects in Matthew 7, who is the worker of iniquity, the worker of lawlessness. They were not justified. They were never seen as righteous in God's eyes. But God knows all his children. He knows us intimately because we're indwelt with the Holy Spirit. He's living inside of us. But it takes time. It's a process of coming to know Him. So that is why this is talking about fellowship, not salvation. You know, the Bible speaks for itself. So I'm not going to say that's what you're saying, brother, but just in case anyone take it like that. And if it is what you're saying, then it is what it is. But yeah. All right, guys. So that was basically it. I just wanted to show you that Gideon is, is going in a worse and worse direction. He's adding, he's literally adding works to the gospel. He says, it's faith plus works. That is heresy. That is heresy. And the word says, if any man preaches a false gospel, let that man be accursed. Now, Gideon's super new to this stuff. I hope God has grace and mercy upon him. And I pray that he gets out of the false doctrine that he's teaching. I pray that if he's not truly saved, that he gets truly saved. And as I don't want anybody to go to hell, I don't. But if he keeps this up, it's just going to be worse and worse for him. And 
And this is the horrible thing. You know, people like me are in a weird position. We want to have grace and mercy on people like Gideon as they're super new to the whole Christianity thing. However, they have such a large audience, they're leading hundreds of thousands of people astray. So it's like, what do you really focus on more? I think that it's more important to focus on all the people that Gideon is leading astray. It's so many people. So I want to have grace and all that, but at the at the same time, I have to call it out and I have to just be bold in doing so because there is a bad consequence for him to be teaching false doctrine. The consequences are horrible. Even if Gideon is a little bit ignorant, I have to make these types of videos and share the truth and be bold in doing so as the people who he is misleading matter to. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Should Gideon step down right now? I think so. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Until next time, may the Lord keep you. May he shine his face upon you. In Jesus' mighty name.